Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about why you need open cell foam for your vocal recordings. Let's back up a little bit and talk about the two kinds of foam. There's open cell and there's closed cell. Open, that's the operative word here. That means the cells are open to receive airflow. Closed cell, they're not. Closed cell is more for support. So closed cell foam is more for seat cushions in your car, cushions on your sofa, pillows. That's closed cell foam. It's, it's more structurally designed and, and to complement support. It's, it's to support weight. Open cell foam is designed to allow for sound absorption to occur. Two different types of uh, foam, two different types of design, and two different types of material types. So there's a distinction to be made between open and closed cell foam. First off, all right. Second, open cell foam is very lightweight, economical, and it has good predictable performance. It's a little bit difficult to manufacture and get consistency and predictability. We manufacture our own foam technology. So we have a lot of experience with it. Our processes are a little bit different than most. Most use injection molding, we do not. Our processes are proprietary and uh, we don't talk about them for the simple reason we don't want people to steal them. And that's what happens today. You work your whole life for something and people steal it from you. It's crazy. So what's our critical vocal frequency range? 125 to 500 cycles. Ask any mix engineer, what is the most critical frequency range for voice? And they'll tell you, 125 to 500. There may be a little bit of variance here. They may say 90, 100, but this 500 is, is usually right on the number. That has to be done and achieved and treated with very, very predictable and consistent rates and levels of absorption. Music and voice are different than noise. You must have predictability, but here's the key in that 125 to 500 hertz range. You must have linearity. You must have linearity. Here's our performance from 125 to 500 compared to two competitors. You can see the difference. You can see the smooth linearity, the smooth rate and level. Look at the other two. Why would you use that performance to treat the most critical frequency range when it has huge drops in performance? Those are called spatial irregularities. Why would you use that treatment type when you're dealing with the most critical frequency range for music and voice? Why is that frequency range the most critical? Human voice is what we use to communicate with. We're very sensitive to tone changes, amplitude changes, any change in human voice. If I raise my voice like this, it's way different than if I talk like this. So we're sensitive to that, right? Look at our performance. We are smooth from 125 to 500. That took me eight years to figure out. I darn near bankrupted the company going after it, but we got it. And the investment has been well worth it over these 14, 15 years, however long it's been. But we don't have any spatial irregularities in response. How do you treat a problem with something that produces more problems? You don't. And that's why people that buy this stuff are very, very disappointed in the performance. Comments like, oh, it sounds flat, it, it doesn't sound right, it's too much here, too much there. You never get that with our foam technology. We've never even had a piece of our foam returned 14 or 15 years. Music and voice are not noise. This is critical. People think that sound absorption is sound absorption, period. And you can apply it to any situation. You cannot. There is no one size fits all. You have to have proper rates and you have to have proper levels. You have to go low enough and get enough, right? How do we figure out how low to go? 
we can adjust the thickness of the foam. Okay. Our two inch starts at 125 and you can see that performance reflected in the graph there. You want to start at 100, double the thickness. You want to start a little bit lower at 90. You got a real deep baritone voice. You can use six inches of them. The linearity stays the same. The resident frequency or how low it goes changes with thickness. Almost like any product, diaphragmatic absorption, the thickness of the cabinet determines how low it goes because you're trying to absorb percentages of wavelengths. So distance is critical, depth is critical, right? You've got to manage the reflections at your mix console for you engineers out there and for you two channel guys, the same principles apply. You have to manage the primary, secondary, and tertiary reflections. The primary is the closest reflection from the wall that the speaker is next to. That reflection then travels across the room, strikes the opposite wall, then becomes secondary. Then the secondary travels across the wall and becomes tertiary. All three of those reflections have to be managed. So if you're setting up your room and you have your two speakers, this sidewall treatment has to be all the way we always recommend one foot past the listening position but the point is you've got to cover all of these reflections that go across the room like this because we're trying to achieve a balance between the direct energy from our speakers and the reflected energy from the room remember the room doesn't want us there so it's going to do everything in its power to push us out it's going to produce reflections. It's going to produce unwanted pressure with room modes and lower frequencies. It doesn't want, a, want energy in it. Best room is no room, but we can't have no rooms. You know, we have to have protection from the elements. Ceiling height. Big overlooked dimension when people are talking. They're all focused on the four walls, but they get, forget the floor to ceiling. Well, the floor to ceiling is usually the smallest of the three dimensions. If it's the smallest of the three dimensions, it's going to produce the largest of the problems. Smaller space, bigger low frequency problems. More need for reflection time signature management if it's a shorter distance in a smaller room. So we can use that foam technology for the ceiling. Look at our CPA product. This is a perforated absorber. We have a lot of familiarity with perforated absorbers. We use them inside our diaphragmatic with our carbon technology. We can adopt the same thing to the ceiling treatment. We can make it lightweight. We can get down in that 60, 70 cycle range, which we need to. And it comes with fabric. If you want to cover it, all kinds of colors and textures, you can make it pretty. But the bottom here, line here is you want to keep it lightweight but you still got to get down into that 60, 70, 80 cycle range based on ceiling heights today. Look at the cell structure of our foam. There's the reason it's so smooth. When I was designing the foam and looking at it under a microscope, each prototype, I found out that the cell structure needs to be uniform. Like a, a beehive with, with the individual cells, the six-sided cells, you know how they they all kind of fit together in that honeycomb kind of situation. You know, they're all interlocked with no spaces between them. That's the goal, consistency. That's how you get the linearity. You don't have big gaps in the cell structure. The density of our foam, our foam is almost twice as heavy as, as standard foams. That's the key, the cell structure and the density. That's how we get the linearity in performance. That's how we get that smooth curve from 125 to 500 hertz. Why you need open cell foam for your vocal recordings? Relatively inexpensive, lightweight, because you're going to have to cover lots of surface areas. And more importantly, predictability and consistency in performance. No dropouts, no exaggerations, just a smooth curve that you can apply to treat it. Open cell foam. Why you need open cell foam for your vocal recordings. I hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. 
We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple of days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.